Hello students, welcome to this session of Parasitology. Today I will be talking about teniasis infection. Teniasis is a nematode infection uh, which is caused by mainly two species, Tenia sageneta and Tenia solium. So before going to these species, let's see what are the what are those tapeworms because Tenia species comes under tapeworms or cystode under helminths. So the uh, Tenia solium and Tenia sageneta are the intestinal tapeworms which will have three morphological forms. The first stage is adult worm where you find a long segmented flat tape like worms thus the name tapeworms and other two stages are egg stage and the larval stage of the parasite. Now if you see the adult worm uh, you can see there are three parts for the body that is one head which is otherwise called as colex which that is for the attachment. It is followed by neck region then you have strobula. Now strobula consists of many segments which are called as proglottids. These proglottids will have reproductive organs and there are three types of segments you find in tenia species. The first stage uh, first part it is immature proglottids then mature proglottid and the gravid segment. Now length of the parasite usually based on the number of segments, how many proglottids are present in the parasite. You can also find rudimentary type of nervous and excretory system in these parasites. Now coming to the tenia species, we are going to talk about two different species. One is tenia sageneta and tenia solium. So both these species can lead to intestinal teniasis. Whereas in tenia solium you find another infection which is named as cysticercosis. So both the parasite, uh, a parasitic infection you can prevent by adequate cooking of the meat, effective uh, fecal disposal, good personal hygiene and immediate treatment for the infection. Coming to the first species that is Tenia sageneta, this parasite is otherwise called as beef tapeworm. Now if you see the adult worm, there are three stages for the parasite as it is a nematode, you can find adult worm, egg and the larval stage. So if you see the adult worm, the first portion scolex or the head will be pear shaped. Then it will have four suckers. Now this portion is for the attachment. Then it is followed by a long neck. In case of Tenia sageneta, neck will be longer. Proglottids number will exceed a thousand that is it may be up to two thousand. Now coming to the second stage that is the egg stage which cannot be differentiated from Tenia solium eggs. It will have a spherical shape bile stained egg with a transparent shell. This embryo 4 will be radially striated which carries three pairs of hooklets which we can identify during stool examination. They do not float in the saturated um, salt solution. Now coming to the third stage that is known as cysticercus bovis. So this cysticercus bovis this is the uh, larval stage you find in the intermediate host which is cow or buffalo. So this infection is very common in people who takes beef. Okay, now then man become the uh, definitive host because you carry the adult worm of the parasite. So if you see the life cycle what happens is a person, human being take the infection, get the infection by taking insufficiently cooked or not cooked uh, a raw type of beef. Now once the beef enter into the human body, this beef uh, consists of the larval stage which is cysticercus. Bovis. Now the bovis enter into the intestine, it become the adult worm. Now these adults will start liberating eggs through the fecal matter. These eggs may contaminate the soil. Once the eggs reaches to the soil, during raising what happens, this cow or buffalo can, ox or cow can take the eggs of the parasite during raising along with the grass and then it enter into the cow. So cow become the intermediate host because here X become the larval stage where it is present it is present in the muscle so this larval stage cysticercus bovis become infective for the human being so this is how the life cycle of the parasite uh, take place so you can see that this infection is very common in people who takes cow, um, beef clinical feature most of the time patients are asymptomatic but in some they complain of uh, abdominal discomfort nausea weight loss chronic indigestion and uh, how do we diagnose it uh, we usually diagnose it by uh, demonstration of proglottids that is the segments of this parasite in the fecal matter which can be done my macroscopically or microscopically you can go for stool examination it will show the presence of bile stained egg spherical shaped structure then other method zero diagnosis where you can detect antigen or antibody molecular method also available we can go for PCR the treatment is usually given by prasequental the prevention of the infection as a nematode intestinal nematode personal hygiene adequate cooking of beef is very important 
Coming to the next uh, species that is Tinea solium, this is slightly different in the morphological forms and uh, the infection. Uh, so here the parasite is named as spoke tapeworm. Now this is armed tapeworm of man. Why it is armed tapeworm? Because if you see the adult uh, head part that is colex, you can see a separate structure called as rostellum. Now this is uh, missing in Tinea sagenata. So Tinea sagenata is unarmed tapeworm of man whereas Tinea solium is armed tapeworm of man. Now in this colex what else you have? Four suckers, rostellum and hooklets. So it's a pinhead uh, size. Uh, size of the parasite's colex will be pinhead and it will be globular in shape. Neck will be smaller compared to tinea sageneta means uh, it will be thin and proglotid is also lesser that, that is in case of tinea solium you find maximum up to 1000. So it will be usually less than 1000. Egg is same exactly like tinea sageneta egg where you can find that spherical bile stained um, egg with uh, three pairs of hooklets inside. And the larval stage it is named as cysticercus cellulose. This larval stage is very important as this larval stage also is infected for the human being. Coming to the life cycle of teniasis. So here we are talking about teniasis which is the intestinal infection. How do we get the infection? By taking uncooked or partially cooked pork. So people who take pork with this um, larval stage that is cysticercus cellulose you get the infection. So man become definitely host because you find in the small intestine tinea solium adult worm. So man is a definitely host. Intermediate host will be those animals which are taking the eggs from the uh, parasite which is pig or it can be man because there is another st uh, infectious state of this tinea solium cysticercus cellulose which we will see later. So in this life cycle what we see is man take this undercooked meat and here in the intestine you find the adult worm which will be liberating eggs these eggs are taken by the pig now inside pig these eggs become the larval stage cysticercus cellulose and again this larval stage is ingested by the human being so this is one life cycle which happens in tinea solium which will lead to intestinal teniasis in case of intestinal teniasis usually we don't find any symptom most of the patients uh, complaints uh, of abdominal discomfort, loss of appetite, weakness if uh, there are symptoms. So lab diagnosis is same as tinea species, any other tinea species like stool examination. Macroscopy appearance shows, uh, stool sample shows proglottids and eggs can be differentiated, uh, of tinea egg can be differentiated and then zero diagnosis by detection of antigen or antibody. Molecular method will be PCR. Treatment and prevention is same for intestinal teniasis. But in case of tinea solium, what else we have to remember is cysticercus cellulose. Now what is cysticercus cellulose? Ingestion of the eggs of tinea solium. Usually uh, larval stage of tinea caused intestinal teniasis. But here we are taking ingestion of eggs of the parasite. Uh, maybe the food is contaminated. If it can be vegetable or any food can be con get contaminated because of the fecal contamination or it can be because of auto infection. What will happen? It forms the larval stage but it get deposited in some organs like brain, eye, subcutaneous but what we find most commonly is neurocysticercosis. Neurocysticercosis with seizures, hydrocephalus, increased intracranial pressure or chronic meningitis. So wherever there is uh, the cysticercosis development, you will find the symptoms in the patient. This can be diagnosed uh, by biopsy, radiology, FNAC methods or zero diagnosis by detection of antigen or antibody. So while preventing this infection, we have to uh, see that patients, are, uh, people are uh, preventing the contamination of the food, especially um, the fruits or the vegetables when they take, they should be cooked properly. Otherwise, it, the eggs can, by mistake, it can enter into the human body, leads to the in cysticercosis cellulose infection. Treatment is by either surgical removal of the cysts um, or uh, by giving albendazole. So hope you have understood the tinea species. Two important species we have. One is tinea sageneta, tinea solium. Other one is tinea solium. Thank you.